Hey guys, what's up? Tempers are here, back again for another video, and this one is going to be uh, the top 10 reasons why Halo 5 sucks. <clears throat> now, when the game first came out two weeks ago, and this is going to be, today is going to be the two week anniversary of Halo 5 Guardians, um, I noticed a lot of people liked the game, uh, a lot of pros, a lot of commentators, a lot of personalities that streamed and made YouTube content. They enjoyed the game, a lot of Call of Duty players enjoyed the game and all this stuff. Now, two weeks later, I'm noticing that the tweets have changed. Uh, a lot of people went from being positive about this game to being negative about this game. Um, mostly talking about uh, the maps. Um, a lot of people don't like FFA the way it is in Halo 5 Guardians. A lot of people don't like BR Stars. Not just the competitive players, but the casuals. Surprise, surprise. Um, and also the Spartan abilities. Surprise, surprise. So, uh, these are in no order at all. I'm just going to start off with the first one that uh, I jotted down. And that is going to be one that uh, not everyone is going to agree with me compared to all the others, um, which is going to be the cartoonish rated T for Teen gameplay of Halo 5 Guardians. What I mean by that is uh, having no blood in this game compared to every single other Halo FPS game that we played, every uh, Halo AAA title game that we played. Uh, there's no blood. It feels like I'm playing a kid game. Uh, rather than my my Halo game, you know, since Halo is my favorite game, uh, my favorite franchise to play, um, it just it doesn't feel smooth. It feels uh, not uh, not as clunky as uh, Halo Four did to me, but it doesn't feel as smooth as Halo Two or Halo Three or um, or Halo Two Anniversary. And that's probably because Sprint and Thruster Pack. Um, a lot of a lot of the reasons why uh, I don't feel like taking this game seriously or competitively at all is because Sprint and Thruster Pack. Now, th uh, three for three did add in a risk to using Sprint, um, meaning that your shields aren't going to go up if you've taken damage while you're sprinting. You have to stop sprinting and you have to wait. Now that would be good if there was no Thruster Pack in this game and if there wasn't so many maps that had so much cover on them. I've seen so many instances, including me having experience, and it's not me or the people that I've watched uh, this happening to sucking or missing shots. It's just that there's so much cover on the maps, and it is it's the same problem that we've had since Sprint became a thing in Halo Reach. <clears throat> and um, they just run away. Even if they're one shot, they run away. There's so much cover on the map that it doesn't matter if they're one shot. It doesn't matter about the risk. And even if we're playing on a map that doesn't have that much cover, they can use thruster pack instead of sprinting to get that extra bit of speed to get out of the way and that pretty much nullifies the risk of using uh, sprint while you're one shot or hurt. Um, it just it takes a lot of skill out of the game. It, it adds a lot of RNG in the game. It's the same thing everyone has talked about since day one with sprint. People put themselves in horrible situations. They don't know how to push. They don't know what routes to take and they just you know get away with it scot free um, and the people that are you know taking the right routes and looking in the right places and using map awareness and you know their experience to control the map and get kills and move to the other person's base they are not getting rewarded because the other players are surviving because of sprint and thruster pack now i know you can take sprint out of custom games um, but we're still waiting on Forge to come out. We're still waiting for these custom game options to happen um, before we can take this game seriously as a competitive title. We had our first tournament in Daytona uh, with Iron Gaming hosting it, and the whole entire time you saw people crouch walking because we had motion sensor in the game, something that isn't supposed to be in Halo when we're talking about Halo competitively. Also, on the motion sensor, <clears throat> no, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to save that for a little bit later because that's on the list. Um, so, that's number one right there. Not everyone is going to agree with me, of course, but that is how I feel. Um, every game has, every Halo game has been rated M for Mature because you have that blood, you get that satisfaction for foreshadowing somebody, um, you know. Uh, moving on, number two is going to be No Big Team Battle at launch, which is also why Shoddy Snipers sucked, which was the weekend playlist that happened last weekend. <clears throat> so, um, they announced because... I don't know if it's because of Warzone or whatever, but they announced that Big Team Battle was not going to be at launch um, on the 27th when the game came out of October. Uh, they said about three weeks or four weeks after that, the game will, uh, the Big Team Battle will come out. So I'm guessing that's going to be at the end of November or be first week of December. That's going to come out um, right next to Forge coming out, which is supposed to come out in December as well. 
Um, and that, and the Forge probably ties into this, not having Forge at launch. I mean, it's huge, you know? This, because this is technically, we are technically playing an unfinished game. Big Team Battle has been around since Halo 2. Technically Halo 1, because you had big... Uh, Big Team Battle Maps and Halo 1, but online-wise, Xbox Live-wise, it's been around since Halo 2. You cannot launch a Halo game without Big Team Battle being in it. Warzone is fine. You know, you can leave that in the game, but also have Big Team Battle, so you have 8 versus 8 traditional Big Team Battle Maps and game types. You can also have your fun, you know, rec packs, requisitions, playing Warzone 12 versus 12. You can have that separately, because then you can have two different social playlists. <clears throat> also, why shoddy snipes suck? You you cannot put a playlist in there with no maps to support team snipers. Let's look at all the other Halos when we had shoddy snipers or even team snipers in there. Halo 2, we played on Headlong, we played on um, Waterworks, we played team snipers on um, Burial Mounds, I'm trying to think of all the maps, Terminal, we played it on Quaglation, all maps that were in the BTB playlist as well, because Big Team Battle maps are also there to support Team Sniper playlists. You can't play Team Snipers on Midship, or on Ivory Tower, Lockout, even though there were some arena maps that were in, because they kind of fit. It's kind of like Halo 3, you know, Team Snipers, we had it on, um, I think we had it on Construct, I, I think, uh, which, you know, it, it's, it's a... It's a arena map, but just because of the way that Construct was constructed, um, you could have Team Snipers because of the, it's the same thing with Narrows. Narrows was an arena map, but, um, you know, a competitive MLG map, but you could have Team Snipers on there because of the way it was constructed. It worked with Team Snipers. Long, narrow um, sight lines worked with Team Snipers. <clears throat> you, you, you can't have Team Snipers on these maps. You know, Truth... Um, Regret, The Rig, Eden, Empire, all these maps are so small you can't do that because people are going to pull out their shotguns and they're going to utilize Sprint and they're going to utilize Thruster Pack and they're just going to have that out at least 90% of the time because there's no reason to pull out your sniper in these small quartered maps, you know? I mean, it just makes no sense to me why you are going to put shoddy snipes in before you put Big Team Battle in because you're not going to have the maps to support um, shoddy snipers. And another thing with Big Team Battle is um, it feels like 3v3 is going to be utilizing a forge mostly for Big Team Battle maps, which is just going to go horribly, 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 horribly wrong. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, Shiny Snipers was a mess. I don't, I don't even understand why it was ranked. Uh, I mean, I'm going to talk about, um, I'm going to talk about this in a second here. Um, so going on to number three, that's how I feel about number two, Big Team Battle and Sniper. So going on to number three, ranking system is broken. And this is what I'm going to talk about with the Shoddy Snipers. Ranked, I played Shoddy Snipers. I got, I did my ten placement matches. I, um, I got into Onyx. And then I'm going to work my way up to Champion. It's, it, you know, Champion's not going to really matter because it's only going to be here for like three days, right? It's a weekend playlist. Um, double XP and all that. <clears throat> but I win... One game on my Onyx 1500, I win one game, and I get put into champion 144. That makes absolutely no sense to me, and the only excuse that you can tell me is that not enough people are playing the playlist, which absolutely makes no sense because it's a Weakland Double XP new playlist, Shoddy Sniper, something that people have wanted since day one. It's the same thing with Team Doubles and all of the other playlists that are fan favorites. Team Snipers, Shoddy Snipers, anything that involves snipers, it's fan favorite. You can't tell me that people are not playing in the playlist. So, basically, it's a, bro it's a broken ranking system. This whole entire ranking system, that, that whatever his name was, that came over from StarCraft 2 to put this in, it's broken. It doesn't work as well as the 1 through 50 ranking system that's been in Halo 2 and Halo 3 and MCC. It doesn't work. I mean... I played Breakout. I decided, hey, you know, what the hell? Let's try to get our, uh, let's try to get, you know, as high of a rank as we possibly can in Breakout. And um, I played ten placement matches, going positive every single game. One game, I went nineteen and three plus sixteen, and every game I was on top of my team in in points, kills, whatever. Right, I was doing the best, and 
after 10 placement matches of me having over a 7.0 uh, KD, they put me in Diamond 1. Diamond 1. When other ranked players like Team Arena or Slayer, I've had a lower KD, and I've done worse than those playlists compared to Breakout, and they put me in, like, Diamond 5 or, you know, or, um, Onyx. When I, it, it makes no sense. But my, I mean, all, all this, placement matches go, go, um, over your KD. That is how they rank you in the ranking system. 10 placement matches for your individual score or your KD, same thing. And then when you get ranked, then it, then they rank you on wins and losses, and your KD doesn't matter anymore. So if that's the case, that makes no sense in putting me in Diamond 1 if people that are doing worse than me are being higher ranked. And another thing I want to talk about. Okay, I'm like, whatever, 3 for 3 You're going to put me in Diamond 1? I'll just I'll grind and you know move myself up. I win three games against people that are higher ranked than me, Onyxes, whatever, and it doesn't move me up to Diamond 2. Three games in a row, I win. People that are high ranked than me, and it doesn't move me up. This ranking system is broken. Broken, broken, broken. Enough said. Number four, all UNSC maps are copies of each other. The little MOA that works for Team Beyond Not Net touched on this a little bit, and which is why I'm bringing it up. If you look at all UNSC maps, they are copies of each other. The Rig, Empire, Eden, <coughs> um... Uh, frick, whatever you, what, what other UNSC maps are there? Uh, Plaza. If you look, if you go, if you go into custom game, you pan out, use the camera, go as far back and up as you can. You will notice that these maps are copies of each other. All they do is color code each other to make it look like they actually put effort into the maps. Um, Warzone as well. All three, all the Warzone maps are copies of each other with the design, with the UNSC design. They put little effort into making. These human maps. They really, they put little effort. Um, that's all I'm going to touch on there. Number five, broken matchmaking system with team of fours matching against randoms. This is, this makes no sense why this is still happening when we've been talking about this since Halo Reach. I mean, Halo Reach was the first game without a ranking system. I mean, we played Halo 2 and Halo 3. I mean, things were going good. Ranking system. Team of 4s were matching against Team of 4s. You could tell in Halo 3 who, you know, was partied up with it because you'd have a bar next to their name connecting them, and you'd be like, oh, okay, those guys were partied up together. Um, and in Halo Reach, the ranking system was gone, and we're like, okay, we'll try to play the game. We'll try to, you know, play it as long as we can. Um, and Team of 4s are getting matched up against randoms, and Team of 3s are getting matched up against randoms, and Everything in between Team of 2s, Team of 4s matching each other. I mean, we want a fair system, but how can we have a fair system if Team of 4s that are playing with each other every single day? I mean, for a perfect example, Evil Geniuses goes into matchmaking and they match up against four randoms. How is it fun for them and how is it fun for the four randoms? The four randoms are trying to get better individually. Evil Geniuses is trying to get ready for a tournament. How are they going to get ready? If you don't, if you don't have anybody to scrim, you're gonna have to go into matchmaking. But you can't just sit there. You have to practice something, right? So, how are they gonna? They want to play against good teams so that they can practice their strats, their callouts, their map positioning, everything. But how can they do that if they don't play against good people? You know, people that just want to have fun, but they don't want to play Warzone. But every single other playlist is ranked, so the casuals are going to suffer. And if the casuals are going to suffer, they're going to leave and they're going to play a game that just came out, a.k.a. Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which is why the numbers on Call of Duty Black Ops 3 are 10 times bigger than Halo 5's right now. And it's not because Call of Duty is on every single platform. It is not the reason. Even if Call of Duty was only on the Xbox One, they would still be 5 times bigger than Halo 5. And it's not because... The game is um, better in any way. It's just because it supports casuals more than it supports. Um, it, I mean, it just it doesn't support fun. The the team of fours matching against randoms. It doesn't support fun. It doesn't support just anything. It's just a whole mess, and people just want the game to end. It's just horrible, horrible, horrible. I mean, especially when we have a ranking system. How can you have Team of Fours matching randoms when you're using a ranking system? I understand if it's not ranked because you would have, you know, there would be nothing to go off of. But you have this ranking system that this guy worked his ass off on, and you're having Team of Fours match 
randoms. I don't understand. We've talked about this. We've told you three for three since Halo Reach, since you took it from Bungie at the end since Halo Reach. Please, 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 team of fours, match team of fours, team of threes, match team of threes with one random on each team, team of twos match team of twos, or team of twos match randoms. That's how it was in Halo 3. Make it how it was in Halo 3, because that was perfect. That was perfect. I mean, and we told, in Halo 4, we told you again, and you didn't listen. You still didn't listen. I mean, I, I'm i just baffled. Moving on. Number six, shooting in Halo 5 is inconsistent. A lot of people have talked about this. The X and Y axis is not consistent. <clears throat> the sensitivity from going vertical is completely different from the sensitivity from moving horizontal. When you go right to left, it's fine. But when you go up to down, it's slower. I play on force sensitivity. I've been playing on force sensitivity since Halo 2. Everything has been fun. Um... Even when I had even when I had controllers that were slow, um, it still wasn't that big of a deal. But now I go up and down, and I'm just so slow. I'm playing on six now in um, in Halo Five, and right to left is still the same. So right to left is going to move at six, up and down is going to move at like a three or something. They need to fix it because shooting is it does not take as much skill in this game as it did in previous Halos. Um, number seven, theater is broken. Uh, first of all, when the game starts up in theater, you do not start on your own. Uh, excuse me, on your own player. You start on some random player. Um, another thing is, let's say you get killed by a splinter grenade, your body disintegrates. It goes on to another player's POV, um, similar to how it was in Halo 3. If you fell off a map, uh, there was a good chance that you would have to, you know go and change your POV to your own POV because it would change um, the theater would change the POV and then in breakout every single round in breakout after a round ends on your POV you have to reset it to go onto your POV because it switches to somebody else's POV when a new round starts um, also the biggest thing that's broken with theater is where you're shooting is not actually okay when you were in the game playing where your shots hit it does not look like it's not the same. Your reticle is not the same as it is in theater. I mean, um, your guy looks like he's missing all the shots, and then you get a perfect medal for four shotting, five shotting a guy. And then if somebody's watching your gameplay, they're like, "What the hell? That makes no sense at all." The reticle is, I don't know, I don't know what you did, Halo uh, three v three. I don't know what is what went wrong, but it isn't um, lining up how it actually happened in the game. Kind of how uh, kill cams worked in Halo 4 and um, the Master Chief Collection um, with Halo 2 when you had kill cams in. They don't show what actually happened. Where you shoot in the game is not accurate going back into theater. You need to fix that. Number 8. Dedicated servers are inconsistent. I understand dedicated servers are not there to make the connection perfect. They are there to stop host booters from cheating and all the other stuff. Um, but they are still very inconsistent. People that are playing custom games or people that are just playing matchmaking, they're noticing that they're th they'll throw a grenade and their grenade takes five seconds to come out. They'll ask their teammates, hey, are you guys having the same problem? They're like, yes. So I understand if somebody's connection is messing up, then they're going to lag because the dedicated service is not going to fix your own connection. But if everybody in the whole entire game is having the problem, it is on you 3 for 3 and it is not on player's connection. The dedicated servers are inconsistent. A lot of people have talked about it, that there is still host in this game. You need to take a look at it. You need to fix it. Um, number 9, no BR starts and motion sensor 18 meters instead of 25 meters. Okay, so no BR starts is huge. Even casuals want BR starts because it is traditional. It is traditional in Halo 2, in Halo 3. Halo Reach had a DMR, but you still had DMR starts. Halo 4, um, you had BR starts. And Halo, um, and then Halo um, 5, you have a soul rival starts with pistol secondary. Where is the BR? Where is the BR? I don't care how good the pistol is. It is a utility weapon. That's why it was built. The only game where it makes sense is Halo 1 because you didn't have a BR in Halo 1 and it was just a, it was just overpowered and crazy in Halo 1. Um, but with Halo 5, I understand it's a pretty good weapon, but the BR still kills faster than the pistol in Halo 5 <clears throat> if you hit all your shots. Uh, the pistol is a five-shot kill, 
that PR is a four shot kill. Um, it just it makes no sense why there isn't any game types to that have BR starts on. Um, you know, the BR shoots uh, long. It's more long range and it's more just balanced overall than the pistol is. You know, I mean, it it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it's traditional. I don't get it. Anyway, moving on. Number ten. Um, like I said, every playlist is ranked except Warzone. It's not good for casuals and new people. Um, you can't you can't have every playlist ranked because what if a lot of casuals, a lot of new people, a lot of people that just play the game to have fun, to, they get off work, they want to relieve some stress, they want to play Halo Five, they don't want to play ranked, they they aren't trying to get better, they aren't trying to play tryhards, they're just trying to have fun. How can they have fun if the only playlist that they have to play is Warzone if they don't want to play ranked? I mean, you ha I mean, in Halo 3, you had so many playlists that were social. Rumble Pit was social. You had Social Slayer. You had Social Objective. You had Social Big Team Battle. I just don't get it. You, it, it makes no sense to me because you said before this game came out that with this game, you're trying to bring in more people, more new people, more casuals, and you're trying to get them to play the game and not leave for another game. But how can you expect that to happen when you have only one playlist that is unranked? Even the double XP was ranked. Why? It makes no sense. You have to have at least a couple playlists besides Warzone that are unranked. Team Arena is the competitive Halo Championship Series playlist. I understand that it has to be ranked. Slayer uh, SWAT, uh, Breakout, and then Free For All, you have to figure out out of those four which two need to be unranked because there has to be something for the casuals to play other than Warzone because there are a lot of casuals that may want to play in that arena experience without having to try hard. Um, and they want to get better before they actually try to go into the ranked playlist and try hard. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so that's 1 through 10. I have some honorable mentions that I'm going to just go through pretty quickly here. The first one is no population number counter anywhere like it was in Halo 3. You had in the bottom left num the first day you had almost a million people concurrently playing the game. You have taken it away because in Halo 4, people would add up every single day the playlist numbers and they would realize that the game had 20,000 people concurrently playing it or less before MCC came out and you guys were embarrassed by it your insecurity got to you and now you're not giving the numbers to your consumers your fans and your customers which are making you guys a little bit shady and I guarantee you some people are leaving because of that they are not gonna stick with it with a company that they can't trust another thing Microsoft is lying about sales now I'm not going to put all of this on Microsoft because they are just covering their asses because they are a huge professional company that has a lot of um, they have a lot of a, a huge reputation to uphold. Um, 3 for 3 made a it, it, it's not a horrible horrible game but it's not a great game it's not even a good game in my eyes Halo 5. Um, in in I mean, Halo, Halo 2 sold uh, over $200 million in sales just by selling the game. Halo 1, um, I think it was about the same. And then, and then ever since Halo 2, it would get bigger and bigger. Halo 3 sold about, um, there was like $300 million. And then Halo 4 sold more than that. I don't think it reached $400 million. Um, it reached a little under that. And then Halo 5 comes out. And then you say that... Halo 5 has made over 400 million dollars in sales, but guess what? That is not true because if you're saying Halo 5 has made it in sales, you're talking about the game. The game, the disc that cost $60 to get or the bundle or whatever. You got 400 million dollars, you did not because you're factoring in the bundle 1 terabyte $499 Xbox One that you custom themed 
with the controller that was custom themed in the box, you added that into that. You cannot do that because that's not Halo 5, that's an Xbox One. Just because it has the Halo 5 theme on it does not mean that it's Halo 5, even if the game comes with it. You can take 60 bucks out of that, that's cool, because I know an original Xbox One costs $349 right now, so you're upping it about $150, so you can take $60 out of that, that's cool and fine and dandy, but you cannot add that into the rest of it, you cannot add that into the sales because you're talking about the sales for the disc. So that is just invalid, inaccurate information. I understand Microsoft has to cover their ass, but it just shows how shitty this game is compared to all other Halos when Microsoft cannot be truthful with the fans. People getting banned from matchmaking by getting kicked from the server. Now, there are some rules, some ban um, rules that they put into this game which are fantastic and I love. But, when the servers are unstable and people get kicked from the server not because of their own connection, they did say that if you lag out too much you will be banned. I understand that because it's not fair for the other players. But, if the player gets kicked because of your server kicking them, they should not be flagged for that because that's on you. So you need to make it so that doesn't happen because people have been saying on Twitter that, hey, why did I just get banned from matchmaking? I got kicked from the server. It's not my own connection. Nothing else messed up. I have, I have the, you know, I am at a university. I have, you know, 100 down, 50 up, was, you know, 2 ping, right? A fantastic connection. My connection never messes up. And then, you know, the game tells you you got kicked from the server. I mean, I mean, you guys got to work on that. Um, too many medals, a thing that uh, isn't, these last two are not that big of a deal, but too many medals, I, I, should, I don't want to get a medal for, you know, getting a headshot, I don't want to get a medal for just getting a generic kill, um, I mean, there's so many stupid medals in the game that are, shouldn't even be in there, like, I don't need a medal for something that doesn't take too much skill, I, I want a medal for getting a double kill, a triple kill, an overkill, I mean, um, you know, getting a no scope, okay, you can give me a snapshot for that, but I don't want to get a medal for, you know, just doing stupid stuff. Um, <clears throat> and the last thing is that the new announcer sucks. Um, like I said in previous videos that I made, ranting about Tier 3 and the games that they're making, the announcer in Halo 2 and Halo 3 would be very serious with a deep voice, and he'd be like, capture the flag, slayer. And now... <clears throat> now and, now, and, and and he's saying more stuff now, which we don't need. He's like, sl he's like Slayer or capture the flag, and then he's like, kill enemy players to score or something along those lines. And it just adds to my first thing. Number one, cartoonish, uh, rated T for teen gameplay, and the announcer factors into that because it's just it's just more you know kid like and stuff. So. That is everything that I have for you guys today. Sorry if you can't understand me a little bit because uh, I'm losing my voice a little under the weather, but I wanted to make this video. It's a very long video, but everything I talked about needed to be talked about. Even There's probably stuff I left out. So if you guys like this video, please thumbs it up. Comment, comment down below. Give me your opinions. I know you're not going to agree with everything that I talk about, so please let's have a discussion in the comment section below. Subscribe for more videos coming soon. Um, I've been uploading a ton of gameplay for Halo 5. Um, also... Uh, you know, if you can, tweet this out, share it, uh, show people um, what's wrong with the game, and, you know, Diver 3 needs to know, um, you know, so uh, hopefully this reaches them. I'll be posting it on uh, the website and stuff, so uh, hit me up with some feedback, some criticism. I'm loving I'm loving that stuff. It helps me make better videos and stuff, so um, that's going to be it for this video. I got nothing left to talk about, uh, so I will talk to you later. I will be posting more content uh, throughout the week, so be on the lookout for that. And until then, I'm Temporistic, and I'm out. See you later.